Hi there, my name is Marley and welcome to my channel. Hope you guys are doing well. This video is going to be my what I watched in March and April video. I do this every couple of months where I talk about all of the TV shows and movies that I've watched recently. Normally I do a bit of a tier rank so you guys can have some recommendations and know what I think you should avoid watching. I think I have about 20 to 24 TV shows and movies to talk about. So let's get into it. Let's hit record for the screen recording. So I went a little bit basic today. Creative juices aren't really flowing, I guess. And we just have our typical tier ranking with the letters. Um, there's five rankings, S, A, B, C, and D. Sorry about it, but let's just get into it. First up we have here, what is this one? Ooh, Ambulance. So this is a movie with Jake Gyllenhaal. I love him, he's one of my favorite actors. And this was an action movie, but don't let that scare you. Uh, I don't really love action movies, so I really only saw it because of Jake and it did not disappoint me. If you don't know, uh, it's about these two brothers who are actually like adoptive brothers. One of them's Jake and one of them is this other actor. Jake is running, his character, is running this sort of crime organization. They rob banks and do steal vehicles and stuff like that. He ropes in his adopted brother to help him with this heist to get some money and things end up going wrong. They end up hijacking this ambulance. The whole movie is basically like a big giant car chase, but in the back there is a paramedic trying to save the life of a police officer and they want her to save him because they don't want to get charged with like killing a police officer. Anyway, actually quite quite a good movie. Um, I really liked the characters in this. It had some fun stuff going on. I always love seeing Jake play a villain, <laughs> a villainous character. He's really good at that. I'm gonna put this pretty high up. I'm gonna put it in the A tier. Then we have Batwoman. So it's really sad news. I just heard that this show got canceled. It's not coming back. And I'm honestly really disappointed because I quite enjoyed this show. It's not my favorite by any means, but I am gonna put it maybe in like the B tier. Uh, it's been a while since I watched the last episode, so it's not really at the front of my mind right now. Then we have, sorry this image sucks, but this is Big Brother Canada season 10 has been airing and we're actually almost at the finale, I think. The finale is going to be happening very, very soon after I upload this video. Um, actually, maybe the finale will have already passed, but I'm filming this early. So basically, Big Brother is a competition show where all these strangers get put in a house and they are competing for power, uh, either by winning competitions or by strategically manipulating people and stuff like that. I've been loving this show like my whole life and the Canadian version of the show is superior in my opinion, it's better than the American version, which I also watch. Um, I'm putting it in the S tier. I think this season has been so, so good. Last season was okay. But this season, it just blows it out of the water. Like it has to be one of the best seasons. It's been so interesting to see some really strategic gameplay from a lot of these people. And we have some very interesting people competing this year. So I really recommend watching Big Brother Canada, like every season. Oh, then we have this movie called Choose or Die, which I kind of randomly watched on Netflix because it had Asa Butterfield in it, which is this British actor that I really love. Weird thing about this movie, I swear, it seemed like it was British, like produced Britishly. <laughs> but they had American accent, I'm pretty sure. Anyways, this is about these two teens who are pretty into like video games and technology and they stumble upon this old like video cassette tape and it is like cursed or haunted. Basically, um, when you play the game, it will like affect your real life. Like it will directly reflect what you're saying, what you're doing, and it will control what happens to you and it will like kill you. And, Kind of basic, like kind of not that, not that good. I honestly want to put it in like D or C. Um, maybe I just put it in D. I'll just be a hater, I'll commit to it. Um, I didn't really like this very much, so don't really recommend it. <laughs> oh, next we have The Clove Hitch Killer. This is also on Netflix. It was like a thriller, murdery movie about this teenage boy. He lives in this town where there used to be this famous clove hitch killer that killed a bunch of women back in the day and the town always remembers it and is still kind of like grieving all the losses but 
the killings did stop. I forget how long ago, maybe like 10 years ago, something like that. Then this boy stumbles upon this evidence that makes him think that someone in his family was the clove hitch killer back in the day. And so he's sort of investigating that and we're exploring that idea that maybe it's someone he knows that was this killer. Pretty good movie. Um, got, <laughs> had kind of a weird deviation that I didn't love. So I'm gonna put it in like B tier, like kind of in the middle. If you do want kind of like a crime thriller, I would recommend this, but it does have kind of a weird middle point. <laughs> I don't know. Um, me and my boyfriend kind of wish it would have been done a little differently at some parts. Then we have Daredevil, the movie from like 2003. We decided to watch this because I've been watching the Daredevil TV show. I'm quite enjoying that. And I've seen most of like the superhero movies that are out there. So I thought, why not watch this? I liked certain parts of this. It wasn't a perfect movie for me, but I liked how they explored Daredevil's disability more, like him being blind. If you guys don't know, Daredevil is like a blind superhero who is really good at fighting and has like his other senses are heightened because he's blind i feel like the show doesn't really focus a lot on his disability and how his powers work and stuff like that but this movie actually showed that stuff and it was pretty interesting to see that however i really didn't <laughs> i really didn't like some other parts like having to do with electra in this movie um i thought the romance was very weird <laughs> A very insta love wasn't really feeling that wasn't really jiving with that i'm maybe gonna give it like a c level maybe it could be higher i don't know then we have oh the defenders speaking of superheroes the defenders was a tv crossover between a couple different netflix superhero shows including daredevil jessica jones iron fist and luke cage <laughs> almost forgot about him I've only seen Daredevil of those shows, but I might go watch the other ones, I don't know. But Daredevil, uh, Defenders was kind of like Avengers, right? Like all the, all the superheroes teaming up. Very slow start. The superheroes didn't start interacting until till like episode three, I felt like it was a very slow start. I'm gonna give it like maybe a C tier. <laughs> I found a couple of the characters just to be a little weak. I really mostly cared about Daredevil and Jessica Jones. I'm really intrigued to watch her story or like her individual show. And then we have Enemy with Jake Gyllenhaal. As I said, love this man. This was kind of like an indie film. It was shot in Toronto where I live. So that was definitely cool to like recognize a lot of the places in that movie. But this is definitely a weird film that will not be for everyone. It has one of those endings where it's like, what just happened? And you really have to like interpret, you have to like research like what was going on. I should say what it's about, but it's about this guy who is watching this movie and like sees himself in the movie and finds that there is this actor who looks just like him out there. And so he tries to like contact this guy and get in touch with him and then ends up kind of like wanting to take over his life kind of thing. This is pretty good. I'm going to give it like a B tier just because I was a little bit off put on like the abrupt ending and just being like, what's going on? But I think if you researched it, there are some kind of cool messages in it. Oh, then we have Fresh. Where did I watch this? I think on Crave or something like that. This is the movie with Sebastian Stan and that girl. <laughs> Daisy Jones, I think her name is. She's more of an up and coming actress I've noticed is gonna be in more stuff. This had that famous TikTok of like the two of them dancing that just kept showing up on my feed. I don't know if you guys had that, but this is like a cannibal movie. This is like a thriller, murdery cannibal movie if you're into those types of things. But uh, we're following this girl who basically has no family and basically like one friend. So not a lot of connections. And then she meets this man he kind of like seduces her ends up she ends up going to his like cabin in the middle of nowhere on a getaway weekend and he kidnaps her and it really goes off the rails from there it's it's pretty graphic if you have a weak stomach like maybe don't watch it like you can probably imagine where it goes when i'm saying the word cannibal is of like pretty gross but pretty pretty fun movie um i would maybe put it pretty high up it did start to get kind of long which is something i would say against it but i love i love sebastian stan love that man oh my god next up we have heartstopper guys i just binged this show yesterday in like four hours it was so good like i am obsessed this is based off the graphic novel series that i've read and it is about 
Charlie, who is this gay boy in high school, and he meets this other boy named Nick, and it's basically their love story. Uh, there's a lot of other side characters who are, for the most part, a part of the LGBT community. So it's one of those shows that really explores the queer experience. We have trans representation along with gay and bi and lesbian representation. It's a very diverse show and it's also freaking adorable. I was crying probably every episode, not tears of sadness, but tears of happiness and cuteness. And it's just so emotional for me, especially as someone who loved the graphic novel series. It was adapted perfectly as the author of the novels actually wrote the show as well. So it's essentially like scene for scene and it was done so beautifully. I was like squealing like it's so freaking cute i want to rewatch it immediately and you know it's gonna go in the top tier like this is such a good show please watch it i really hope we can get season two and we can see the rest of this series adapted even though i feel like i'm going to absolutely cry knowing what comes next next we have how i met your father which is like a spin-off version of how i met your mother which i've also been watching uh like re-watching but i didn't include it here because it's a rewatch. This is about a girl named Sophie and she's talking to her son, telling him about how she met his father. Same, same idea as How I Met Your Mother. Definitely not as good of an execution. I'm very on the fence about this show. I feel like it does take a lot of shows, especially sitcoms, to like find their footing, figure out what they're doing before they get good. There's just a lot of cringy moments in this. I feel like it's almost going for like a family channel style. Like it's a little bit immature, maybe because it's on Disney Plus. I hate to say it, but my girl Hilary Duff is not coming through. She's probably the weakest member of the cast and I just, I don't find her stuff to be that funny. The guy who plays Charlie is the star of the show. He's really good. The actor's really on point and his writing, the writing for his character seems to be pretty good too. I do like the other two girls probably next in terms of their comedic timing and stuff. But yeah, I think this show, hopefully it finds its place. Um, there's definitely some good moments, but some also, but also some weak moments. I'm gonna put it in like the C tier. Next up we have Hypnotic. I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in the dead last tier. Uh, this was a random movie I watched on Netflix. It's like a thriller and it has to do with this man who hypnotizes women and is a killer, I think. Like it didn't really stick with me and like there's a reason for that, okay? <laughs> Next up, we have Jacob's Ladder. I think I watched this because I was really looking for some good twists in a movie. And I think this is kind of like a classic movie known for its twists. God, what even is it about? I think it's, it's this really weird movie about this man who like wakes up on a train and then just is seeing some really weird things. And it's it's pretty trippy. Like you don't know if he's dead or alive, basically. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to spoil because it's hard for me to remember exactly how to describe this, but he is a like army veteran. I don't know how to explain this. I think uh, it was pretty good. I'm going to put it maybe like B just because I'm struggling to remember it. But it did have a pretty good twist, but I also feel like since it's so old, it's something that like was kind of easy to guess. I'm sorry, I'm really flopping with that. Okay, now we have Legacies, which I talk about on my channel all the time in these videos. It is a spinoff of Vampire Diaries and the Originals, following Hope Michelson, which is Klaus's daughter, and this school for supernatural beings. We have a bunch of other like teen witches, werewolves, and vampires. I recently caught up in this. I binged a bunch of the episodes yesterday, so it's pretty fresh in my mind. I just really do like this show, even though it has many flaws. I do feel like it gets very repetitive. This season, some fresher things were happening, some good twists have been going on, but then there's still those episodes where I'm like, this is very repetitive. It likes to do a lot of weird like psychological things where the characters are talking to themselves in their heads and I'm just like, can we move past this? Like this gets kind of old, just a lot of like character. <laughs> character studies kind of going on, but we've had more appearances from characters from the originals this season, which has been fun to see. I'm gonna put it pretty high up because you know what? I just am a sucker for the TBD verse. Then we have Legends season seven. This actually recently got canceled too, along with Batwoman. So I'm pretty sad because this has been a show I've enjoyed for many years, for seven years it's been on, but I do feel like the last couple seasons have not been as good. So 
I just wish it could have had maybe more of like a conclusive ending as it did end kind of on a cliffhanger because they didn't know they were getting canceled. I'll put it in like the, maybe even like the C tier or the B tier, I don't know one of them. Then we have Superman and Lois. Probably shouldn't even be on this list because I think I only watched like one episode in the last couple of months because it's been like on hiatus. But I always do love this show so I'll just put it like up in the A tier. Then we have Survivor season 42 has been airing. I'm just gonna go ahead and put this in the S tier. Along with Big Brother, it's one of my favorite reality shows to watch every single season. I feel like this cast as always has been pretty entertaining. There's a couple of things with the production that I don't love. They're putting a lot of advantages in and yet none of the advantages are really being used. And I feel like it used to be cool when people would use idols in interesting ways and make good moves, but I feel like there's almost like too many advantages and everyone knows who has an advantage so that nothing's really happening with those. But I still always love to see the strategizing and um, backstabbing that happens. So still enjoying that show. Oh, then we have The Adam Project. This was, I think on Netflix with Ryan Reynolds. It's about this guy who ends up going back in time, time traveling to his younger self, trying to what? What is he even trying to do? Save the world? Honestly, this movie didn't stick with me. It's not really my type of movie as it is pretty action-y. And as I said, I don't really like action movies. It's also very family friendly and I don't really watch like movies that are designed for like families <laughs> a lot. So I'm gonna put it in C tier, not really my thing, but if you want like a family friendly, fun, action packed movie, then you can go for this one. Next we have The Batman with Robert Pattinson and Zoe Kravitz that recently came out. I'm gonna put it up in A tier. I, I enjoyed it. I, I like DC superhero stuff quite a bit. Um, and I love Robert, obviously from Twilight. I also like that this was kind of like a mystery detective movie more than an action movie. There still was a lot of action, but the only thing I would say against it was that it got really long where I was zoning out at one point, I think in the middle, but I still like the mystery aspects and I like seeing all these different characters that we know, like Catwoman, Penguin, Riddler, Joker, etc. Yeah, I liked it. Um, the Flash, I talk about this every time. I don't know. I'm gonna put it like C or B tier. <laughs> Moving on. The Weekend Getaway with what is her name? The girl who played Blair in Gossip Girl. This is a pretty fun thriller movie on Netflix, actually. It's about this girl who goes on a weekend getaway with her friend. I forget where they are. Somewhere in Europe, I think. She's a new mom, so it's hard for her to kind of get away from her husband and her kid. But then she kind of blacks out this one night when they're partying and wakes up and her best friend is missing. And so it's a mystery of what happened to her friend who killed her. She's kind of running around the city with the help of this guy, this taxi driver trying to figure out what happened. I love it. I also feel like this movie like never ended. Like there kept being twist after twist. Like it was kind of funny actually how it just never ended, but I really liked it. So I'm gonna put it in A tier, but it maybe could even be S tier. Like I. <laughs> I thought it was pretty fun to be trying to figure out with our main character what happened. A classic like, oh, she blacked out, like can't remember, unreliable narrator kind of thing. Then I watched Turning Red. As I said, I don't watch a lot of kid movies or family movies, but I really did want to watch this one as it took place in Toronto, again, where I live. So was interested to see all of those references. Also, there was the I think it's the first, I don't know, but there was a little bit of type one diabetic rep in this one, very minor, but one of the characters in the girl's classroom is seen wearing a like diabetic sensor or a continuous glucose monitor on her arm, which is visible in a couple of scenes. So I thought that was cool as someone who has type one diabetes, would love to see more of that rep. But anyways, this is about a young like Asian girl who, <laughs> kind of once she hit puber hits puberty, she starts turning into this giant red panda. So obviously that's embarrassing <laughs> for a young girl. So it's about her like trying to keep the panda at bay, but then also she wants to go see this boy band perform. Um, this book or this movie takes place 
I think early 2000s so during that time of like boy bands so that was really fun you know it can be relatable I think for a lot of us especially a lot of us who were like older the older demographic watching it because it does take place like probably when we were kids so it's about them trying to raise money to go to this concert as well as this whole panda lore is going on basically it runs in her family that women turn into pandas when they hit puberty it was pretty fun i maybe would give it like a b just because you know it was a kids movie at the end of the day like it wasn't really for me and it could be a little bit cringy at times because of that but it was pretty good it was probably better than i thought it would be oh my god <laughs> we have West Side Story, the new version of West Side Story. I've never seen the old one, but I'm kind of been interested to watch it to see if I would like it any better because gotta say I did not enjoy this very much. I don't think I've seen the play either that this is based on, the musical. I knew it was based on Romeo and Juliet though going in, which I was excited about, but then I remembered, oh, I hate Romeo and Juliet. Like I hated that play. I don't like the story. I don't like the characters. So watching this, like it was very, very much a retelling of Romeo and Juliet. Like it was not just lightly inspired. It really was a Romeo and Juliet retelling. A lot of the songs were not very catchy. Like I recognized a couple, like I Feel Pretty and America, but a lot of the songs were not very interesting. <laughs> are catchy uh but basically it is about uh kind of like a gang war between like what are their names the sharks and the jets basically like the white people and the puerto rican people in new york back in i forget what time period but back in the old days and yeah you know the story of Romeo and juliet like one of the white people <laughs> ansel elgort's character falls in love with the one of the puerto rican girls and um, obviously it's forbidden for them to be together because their friends and family like hate each other and are in a war basically, a territory war. And there's a lot of like death, there's a lot of betrayal, uh, a lot of um, upsetting things go on. The ending is a little bit different from Romeo and Juliet. I wish it was the same because I wish that they all died. <laughs> I just really hated uh, the two main characters. I'm gonna put it maybe in like D. It was a rough one. It's also very long. The last movie to talk about is Windfall on Netflix. This stars Lily Collins and two other actors, I forget their names, but they're very, they're well known as well. But it's about this rich couple who gets like taken hostage by this man who is attempting to rob their house and they come home in the middle of it. So he's kind of has them hostage. It deals a lot with money and financial status and privilege and those sort of themes, I guess. It was pretty interesting. Actually, like not a ton happens. A lot of it is just these three people in this house talking and stuff like that. I'll maybe put it in like the B tier because it was pretty decent. Like I would probably recommend it if you if you want to watch something. So these are the things I've watched these last couple of months in the order that I recommend them. Obviously my favorites were Heartstopper. Please, please watch along with Big Brother and Survivor. Definitely do not watch Choose or Die, <laughs> Hypnotic, or West Side Story. Thank you guys for watching. Please let me know if you have thoughts on any of these TV shows or movies or any recommendations for me to review in upcoming months. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!